Do not be afraid. Let's go. Hey guys, this is Mark from Stack B Gaming, and this is a follow-up strategy to the one I explained for taking A on train. So I recommend watching that video first before watching this one because in it I explain some fundamentals that the terrorists have to have on train that I won't be repeating here. Okay, I'll start off with an important note on playing as a terror side on train. And that is that this map has very rigidly defined borders as to what areas are given to the CTs and what areas are given to the Ts. So there are no large contested areas that both sides will be competing with one another for. So for example, Banana and CT apps are an example of this. Both sides want to take control of both those areas because they both stand to gain a significant advantage if they take control of those spots. The terrorists can use those spots to better take the bomb sites, and the CTs want to take control of them to limit the amount of space that the terrorists have to work with, so then they can rotate players and whatnot. Since Train has no equiv equivalent to a Banana or a CT Apps, the terrorists only have, all they have to work with is what they're given at the start of the round. Which means that a free-flowing sort of style that a lot of professional teams have, so think of Envious at the start of this year, that sort of style isn't suited very well to Train because there's no areas with which to do this style. You just can't charge up banana or go through CT apps like all of Meister and try to get some of these picks that they get. Instead, you have to be excellent and well practiced at doing very good executes onto either side. Okay, moving on to map control. Again, this is something that I emphasized in my last video when I talked about an A site take, so I suggest going back and watching that because I elaborate a lot more on the positions I'm about to show. But in case you haven't seen it, I'll just go over the, the positions briefly. So the first one I recommend is one person playing here, watching Long Ivy, for the push down that corridor at the end. Next one, or the next two, you're going to send it. One person, if you have an AWP, this will be this player, is going to come out and try to get this pick here. Again, just trying to uh, show his presence into a site. Um, he doesn't want to be picked, so he's also going to have a teammate with him, a support player, watching this angle, watching this angle, etc. Of course, those two are going to fall back when you're ready to do the B site take. And the last two players, as I mentioned before in my last video, is the one that plays up here. He's with the bomb. He plays up here watching B holes. Brown holes is what they're also called, and also watching ladder. And he's going to be with his teammate down here, doing the same job, watching brown holes, and also watching for the push-up B ramp. So it's important to realize that this is the exact same setup as the A site take that I explained before. So that you can use this as a default on terror side. A default that you can go to, and depending on what happens in the round, you can then decide whether to go A site or B site. Depending on what picks you get, uh, what information you are able to get from the CTs as to where they are playing. All this really important stuff can dictate whether you're going to go to A site or B site. Alternatively, at the start of the round, the in-game leader can call, just go to the go to the default but we're going to work B this round. So if you've you might do that if you've gone A site for the past four rounds. And the CTs might be prepared for it. So he'd he'd do that in that sort of case. You can also do a slight variation of that default play. So instead of having two players in team main, you have one player, maybe just a support player. Back here, just making sure they don't push. He might pick a, a tiny bit, but it's really important he doesn't get picked off. So again, just playing passively. You're still going to have the person in brown bin, but one of the players, preferably the AWPer, is going to come up here with the two white horse players. And he is going to 
go down there. The person playing here still stay here. Still stays here. The bomb the person with the bomb still gonna place it there. Still gonna watch ladder. The person that was here can move up further at the start of the round and come up on top of here and watching for the push of uppers. This spot's really powerful because it's essentially immune to any pop flashes that might be coming. So if there's a CT here, he's ready to pop flash like that. Then peek around the corner. A terrorist playing up here is not going to be blinded by that flash because it's all the way down there. So again, a really good spot. He can just sma smash anybody who comes out. And the upper it can be here. Um, he could swap with the person there. It doesn't really... or the person up there, rather. It doesn't really matter. But the reason he's here is because he's going to be peeking down there later. Once I start explaining the smokes, uh, this will all begin to make more sense. Okay, so after you've held those default positions for, say, 10, 20, up to 30 seconds, and you're ready to do the B site take, these are the smokes that you're going to want to throw in order to take the site. So the first one is the most obvious one, the one that everybody knows. You come down here, let go like this, comes down the end of this train and blocks off any angles down there. Most importantly, Z. Any players that are Z cannot see you. Okay. Uh, the next one is for the left side of the plant train. You come in this corner, you aim at the top of this railing here, you take a couple of steps forward and you let go. Like that. Again, self-explanatory, it just blocks off all the angles down there. Of course, still be wary of to on top of the train, because that is also a common spot. Okay. You can also do a pop flash out of that same angle. Exact same lineup. Flash like that. And it comes out. And it's going to blind anybody playing on top of the trains. Um, and mostly anybody on the side as well. Really important if you're busting out of uppers and lowers. Okay. Coming here. So, the two smokes that you're going to do here, one's going to land on uppers and one's going to land to the right side of the plant train. But it's really important which order you do them in. So you have to do the one that lands on uppers first because obviously you don't want to be picked by an upper down the end of uppers. So, you come here, you line it up like this, not showing your shoulder, and you're going to aim to the right side of this light wooden part. Again, you don't want to aim there because you're going to hit the edge of this middle bit. Okay, so you just come here, you take a couple steps forward, like that. You don't even need to take any steps forward, to be honest. Um, it's just a matter of preference. It depend just depends how far you want that smoke to be out. So if you have an AWPA, you might want it to be out you might want this mate to be out a bit further so he has more room to peek. Okay. The next smoke, well actually after you've thrown that one, you have a teammate here who's gonna help you again probably with the Orpa, is gonna help you clear anybody who's gonna be any CT's playing here. So a CT might be here and if you're just by yourself throwing that smoke, he sees it come around the corner, comes out, kills you instantly. That's why you need to have a teammate here ready for that. Another common spot a CT might play is on top of the ladder like this. And when he hears the smoke or hears you pushing, he might just jump out and really, really quickly uh, get you as you're coming out. Just be aware of that spot. Okay. So, again, after you're throwing the one on top of uppers, the next one you want to throw, you're going to stand with your back against the wall, aim above this railing here. It doesn't have to be very precise. And you're going to run until you are just past that edge there. Or basically until you're exposed down there. That's why you have to throw that smack first. Okay. So just come here and run and throw. Bounces there and goes all the way down there. Like that. And again, blocks off all those angles. Okay. And you might have just noticed that I didn't take any damage when I fell down. That's because... If you run with your knife out against this, against these slanted pieces of wood, you're not going to take any damage. However, you can't do it with a rifle. With a rifle, you have to jump, land on the spool. You can also do a pop flash out of that same angle. 
Just like that. Again, there's a smoke here, so they won't see it coming. Anybody in sight will either be blinded by, the, by this one if they're looking here, or if they're looking the other way, they'll be blinded by the one that came out there. And as for a third flash, you can also throw it straight down B main as well. I'm Just like that. So the next thing I'm going to mention is when you're taking the site and you're, say, light on for smokes, so you only have two or three to work with, you don't necessarily have to do all four in order to take the site. You can just do that one and this one. And this all come down. Well, not all. Three or four of you at most. Come down this side and have one person, once you've cleared these angles here, you come around, keep your crosshair here, have one person posted up here as well and plant the bomb like this. You don't have to take the entire site in order to plant the bomb. Of course, if you do do the four full smokes, it makes it a lot easier in, t in terms of a post plant because you're essentially clearing out half of this entire building of CTs when you're taking the site. So it reduces the possible locations that a CT could be when you're doing the post plant. As for the specific post plant positions, the bomb planter is most likely going to be staying here because the smokes might be dissipating or probably will be dissipating uh, once the bomb's down. You can have a person playing aggressively, say you enter the site with no losses then it's okay to risk somebody pushing up this side of the smoke that's here. Let's push it down so you can see. Like this, trying to get a peek there. Or if you knew it was, if there was an op wrap here you can, you can try to push up like this and hold it a, a forward angle, an aggressive angle. Again, that's not necessary. You also have your AWPA up here. A very, very good spot for them because they can see the entire site, all the long angles that they can get with their AWP. Also, the bomb will be planted for them. You also have a, you can have a play at the end of um, Light Blue Train. Again, all these spots are pretty self-explanatory. And you're always going to have a player back here watching for the push. They can play up like this. They could play on top of B ramp, they can play behind this box, behind this box, even all the way behind their upper and towards uppers like this. All those different angles that the a flank is gonna have to check when they're coming around. Of course they could be pushed up a bit further up here, however there's quite a few angles to check and they're not uh, close to each other so he's gonna have to like turn around in order to watch all of them even here even like this he still has to flick if somebody comes here and he's still vulnerable to someone there if they're like walking up that hallway it's it's risky but the people on site will get advanced information if you do play up here and of course person coming up that is very unlikely to kill the person watching it